In many parts of the world, a yurt is a very traditional home, and it's actually quite commonplace. Here in Northern California, on the other hand, it's a bit more unusual. Today we've traveled to meet one young family and their beautiful yurt home that's helping to facilitate a permacultural homesteading lifestyle. Hey Brett! Hey, good afternoon. Good to meet you, mate. Good to meet you. Hi, Hi Beth. Lovely to nice meet, to you. meet you. What a beautiful home you have here. This yurt looks perfectly at home here in the forest, doesn't it? <laughs> well, hey, thanks, and welcome to our little paradise here in the California forest. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. I really want to know about the land that we're on right now because you're both permaculturalists, and this is a new, very big project for you both, isn't it? <laughs> That's absolutely true. We. Uh, we studied permaculture for a lot of years and got to have experience working on other homesteads and organic farms. And two years ago, decided to make a big leap and get a piece of land for ourselves. So we wanted to steward a piece of raw land and restore it back to a healthy place and get to carve out our niche and work with that piece of land. So for us, we weren't born rurally or didn't have any upbringing growing our own food or chopping our own firewood. We come from the city and we did the nine to five uh, spend a lot of money, consume a lot, and live an unhealthy lifestyle kind of thing. But at one point, we kind of just woke up and said, this isn't living life. We're not healthy. We're not happy. We're not contributing to a more positive uh, future in this planet. And for us, when we kind of made this transition, it was just natural to move towards farming and agriculture. But what we noticed was we didn't agree with the methods in which a lot of farming was done. It felt very uh, destructive and not supportive of the natural systems that actually provide the health for our food. So that's kind of what inspired us to shake things up, leave the city and come out to the mountains here and start our homestead where we could get to experience a lot more for ourselves and have our days where we wake up and go out to the garden and grab some food, you know, things like that. Now you're on 30 acres here and that's a really good amount of land to manage, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We wanted a larger piece for privacy and to have land for the kind of resources we needed, you know, uh, trees for firewood and for building materials, as well as being able to expand out and work with the landscape in different ways. You know, larger piece of land means we have more topography and microclimates and have better choices to be able to pick the perfect spot for your garden and things like that. And what was it that actually made you choose a yurt for living on the land? So right after we bought this piece of land, a few weeks later, we found out we were going to have a little one on the way. Initially, we had plans to live in an RV for a little longer and um, build a straw bale home. But we were like, we need something quick. So yeah, it was a great solution to pop up quick. It has nice space and that's how we landed on the yurt. And it looks like you've actually added another room onto the yurt as well. Yeah, so we connected another building just a stick frame building on this to have just a little bit of separation and somehow we seamlessly attached it it has worked really well so yeah and what size is the yurt it's a 30 foot yurt and what about the platform that the yurt sits on so the yurt is just sitting on a basic four by four uh pressure treated platform we went ahead and added some r13 insulation under the floor as well to kind of help obviously keep the temperature regulated and then added on a uh, dug for front deck here for a little bit of an entryway and a place to kind of keep some of our stuff. Great. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the inside and checking out what you've done with it. Well, definitely. Let's take a tour. Let's do it. After you. This is gorgeous. I love how spacious yurts feel when you walk into them. There's something about the way that it's sort of a circular structure with everything going right up to that roof point that really does just make everything feel very open, doesn't it? Definitely one of the advantages of living in a yurt is getting to feel the energy circulating and around space and the openness with that. And the dome as well. Like, I love natural light. I shrivel up and die when it's uh, winter time and there's not enough light. So this just provides amazing light all throughout the space. The layout of this entrance area is really nice as well because you've given yourself almost a bit of a mudroom space, haven't you? So this was really intentional. We got to pick out where all the windows were, the doors, and I laid out in a program, you know, foot by foot, all the pieces of furniture, where this wall would go, how the flow of this would all be laid out. So yeah, we wanted, we wanted it to be open, but compartmentalized at the same time. 
And then what do we have further over here? So this is our office zone. We have a pair of large desks. One we found on the side of the road for <laughs> free and the other one Beth actually made. So again, with the single wall that we used to create some partitioning in the yurt, we also created a little bit of an office space so we could get back into this area and do a little bit of work. Now the office space is especially important for you both because you actually work from home, don't you? Yeah, we both run a, a permaculture business that teaches uh, online courses. So it's a, a integral part of our homestead is our business. And immediately there, I can see this lovely, really big fireplace that you've got. That must keep you very toasty in the winter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with uh, the amount of land we have here, trees are an abundant resource. And when we're managing the forest to keep it healthy, we need to take them down anyway. So for us, using wood heat was one of the better options for heating the yurt. And on that subject, you really have used so many beautiful timbers inside this home as well, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. With uh, building this home, we wanted to be mindful with the resources that we were using. So Beth did an incredible job finding uh, reclaimed material, reclaimed woods, and even buildings being torn down that we took entire cabinets and kitchens out of to be able to build this home. And of course, reuse, that's such a cornerstone principle of permaculture. Yeah, definitely. If we can get our needs met while being able to reuse materials and minimize our footprint, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Certainly is. Now tell me about this wonderfully comfortable lounge area that you've created. <laughs> Oh, this is just a, a really comfortable, beautiful space that we wanted to be able to just love sitting here and looking at the fireplace in the winter time and being able to look out these windows. And this coffee table I actually built many years ago. We were still living in the city and I had originally started getting into woodworking and building. So all of these uh, woodworking pieces came from the alley in the back of my house there. And that was one of the pieces that started my journey in building furniture. So many of the pieces, much of the art and all of that, um, I've built and I love doing it. One really unusual thing that you've done in this space is I'm so used to being in yurts and seeing the canvas walls, but you've actually put drywall up in here, haven't you? Yeah, we did. We wanted to enclose it a little bit better with uh, insulation and keep it a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler in the summer, and also make it feel a little bit more solid than just living in a tent. So we added R13 insulation all the way around the yurt and then uh, sealed that in with drywall and then wood trimming. With the design of this yurt as well, by actually moving the bedrooms into the addition, you've created so much more living space in here, including room for this absolutely palatial kitchen that you've got here. Definitely with the uh, focus of our project here being to move towards subsistence style living and growing as much of our own food as possible, the kitchen becomes kind of the focal point for our lifestyle here. So we wanted a very large kitchen. Yeah, so we do a lot of canning and cook a lot of our foods from scratch. So yeah, the kitchen is where we spend most of our time. So we wanted it to function, to work for us well. So can I also ask just about things like power and water, where is all that coming from? So we're mostly off grid with the exception of our electricity. There was a transformer on site. So we did tie into uh, the grid for electricity, which our power company is 50% solar. So it's not the worst thing. Uh, water comes from on site. We have wonderful well water that we bring up and uh, filter and put into our home here. And we also have a small propane tank for uh, any of the additional appliances that need that. And so now tell me about the design of the kitchen and how you've laid everything out. Well, this was actually a dream come true because I had laid all this out and we happened to come upon a teardown that was happening and this kitchen just fit perfectly. So all of this, the island, the countertops, everything came from this uh, retreat center that was being torn down and it ended up being, you know, it's just a really functional kitchen, the way we move in the space and yeah, it's great. The items that you have here in this kitchen are just gorgeous as well. This beautiful pottery and I love so many of the feature art pieces that you've put in here as well. Thanks. This has been my life's journey, just being an artist and so I've done everything from most of the ceramics that are here and the ceramic light fixture there and this light fixture up here is a, a manzanita branch that you know we just had on our property and gosh years ago i think we found some what gold, pan. gold mining pans and just always had this vision to turn them into lights and so we've lugged them around from a couple of different places and finally we landed here and this needs to go right above our island and our kitchen table. Oh, it looks absolutely brilliant there. 
And I like how in this space as well, you've also got this really nice open, it's like a play area for the little <laughs> one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. That whole area is devoted to uh, our little guy, Sequoia. He gets to play around there, plenty of room to run around the yurt and make his laps with also a standing desk for Beth to be able to do some additional work when she's taking care of him. And so you've done the bedrooms through here, I'm guessing? Yeah, definitely. Let's check it out. Yes, please. This is great. And you're right, it's quite seamlessly connected to the yurt as well, isn't it? Yeah, when we ordered the yurt, we specifically had it designed with an extra door that was gonna allow us to attach an extra building to the yurt. So tell me about what you've done with this room. We laid it out so that way we could have three rooms in this little tiny room, our bedroom, a bathroom, and then a nursery for our little boy. So this is your bedroom, and then this is the bathroom through here, is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Can we check that out? Definitely. Yeah. Very nice. I love that you've got the clawfoot tub there. That was a must. We really enjoy having a bath there. And that was another one of the reclaimed features. We got it off Craigslist and painted it and made it look all pretty. I noticed that there's no toilet in your bathroom. Yeah, we use a composting toilet system that's uh, on the outside of the building. And so what do you do for your laundry here? We do have a covered laundry room on the outside of the building where we can use a washer and dryer, especially in the winter months when it rains for uh, weeks on end. We need to be able to use those, but during the majority of the year, we hang dry our laundry without using any power. What about the gray water here? So yeah, we have a gray water system here where we feed the water out and into the landscape, which is helpful. We want to maintain the health of the trees around the yurt and by adding a little bit of supplemental water during the uh, summer months through our wasted water, we can avoid using some of our clean water resources. That definitely makes sense, especially here in California where drought is such an issue, isn't it? Absolutely. We won't see rain for six plus months and that's a big concern is conserving water here. So the trees will love having you here. <laughs> Absolutely. And then Sequoia's room is next door to us here. Yeah, this is his room right here. And it's a really cute room that you've built here for him too. Yeah, he doesn't need a huge room. It was just enough for the essentials and enough to have a wall so that he can have his quiet space and not be interrupted when he's sleeping because that's such an important thing. <laughs> it so is. And with this home together with your incredible property, what a place for a young one to grow up, huh? That's the whole reason why we did this was we thought where would we want him to grow up and what would we want him to know growing up? We wanted him to know the land, the animals, and how to grow his own food. He loves exploring every inch of this land. We go down to the garden and straight away he'll march right to the strawberries and just like go pick them. And so it's just been really amazing to get to share the food with him and show him where it comes from. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that we're trying to give to him is the gift of understanding the natural world and where health and where food comes from. We wanted to raise him out here in nature with his hands and in the soil as best as possible as we could. How long have you actually been here in this yurt? We've been living in this yurt for a little over a year and a half now since we started the build. And how are you finding yurt life? We love it quite a bit. You know, it's uh, our longer term vision on this plan is to build a straw bale home, but we've fallen quite in love with this little tiny space. Homesteading, it's such a dream for so many people. Can you tell me about what it actually cost to realize this dream for yourselves? Well, of course, you know, the biggest barrier to entry is often land for people. Now it depends on where you go for land prices. The build itself, I'll let Beth speak to. Yeah, so I would say that it probably costs roughly about 35000 between the yurt and the platform and this external building. This is a really great sized, beautiful and functional home for $35,000. Congratulations on Thanks. that one. Thanks. I mean, it had a lot to do with reclaiming a lot of pieces, being really mindful with our resources and getting things from salvage or thrift stores and things like that. And of course, putting the labor in yourselves. All of it. <laughs> Yeah, we did all the labor ourselves, which saved us a ton of money. One of the things about homesteading and the whole sort of self-sufficiency lifestyle in general is that it really is a tremendous amount of work, isn't it? There's so much labor that goes into the land and a homesteader's work is never done. How are you finding that? Well, that's incredibly true. It's both uh, the difficulty and the part I love about it as well. You know, you gotta learn to be on top of things, ahead of things. When it comes to getting our firewood ready, you need to start that in the spring when you really aren't even thinking about it, you know? We need to be tending the garden and putting the beds together in the fall ahead of spring planting. So it's, there's always something to be doing, but it keeps you alive, it keeps you busy. 
and it keeps you healthy. So I think that like one of the biggest things that we realized was how much a person can do and how much a person can do on their own. And when you face some of these bigger challenges, you have this desire to live a different kind of way, live more sustainably, live in a small space, any of these things, it can seem, you know, big to make this change. But every time we've done it, it's been the best things for our lives and the best things for our family. So, you know, for me personally, living out here has taught me who I am as a person. It's allowed me to go deeper within myself than I ever knew possible. And really get to know myself and get to know who I want to be in the world, how I want to show up in the world, and how I want to raise a family in this world. And despite the difficulties that come with living this lifestyle, there is not a moment where I ever think about turning back or, or not doing this lifestyle. Yeah, I would agree with so much of that. How it's changed for me too is uh, really seeing how living differently is not as scary or as hard as a lot of people might think. And so it's really changed what we need and what we don't need. I mean, we are over an hour away from Target or, you know, these big box stores and I don't miss it and I don't care. Like it's not even a part of our life. So just, yeah, living simply, living with less and finding treasures out on our land is way more important to me. Well, the land that you've found here is just so beautiful. Your home is equally as lovely and I cannot wait to see how you develop and how this place grows. Thank you so much for sharing your house with me. Well, thanks for coming and yeah, visiting. Yeah, thanks for coming. One of the things that really excites me in life is when I get to meet people who are truly living out their dreams and their passions in this world. When I think of a home, it really should be something that doesn't stand in the way of accomplishing our dreams, but instead helps to facilitate them and make them all possible. In the case of Brett and Beth and the home that they have created for themselves, that is exactly what this place is doing.